session meetings? Yep. Okay. Do you want to make the motion now? Oh, do you want to make a motion now? Uh, motion. Oh, okay, so there are discussions. Yes. I'll continue by making the motion that we approve the license, that the operator is licensed for Rachel Bennett. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? You have your license. Thank you very much. I won't be mailing it out and won't have it ready until Tuesday because of all the holiday time in between here. Can she, is it in effect now? Can it be in effect? If there can be a provision. I paid for a provisional. I know. Um, I have to go back and type it up. Uh, and I'm doing minutes and everything right now. I understand that you got stuff going up. Is there any way that I could come up tomorrow at some point? Uh, no, because we're not going to be here. Hmm. That's why I'm running into my problem. Um, what about the fact that we know that we have approved the license tonight? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Was could it be the fact that we're not be issuing, so, yeah. issuing the form next week? Yeah. It's within our jurisdiction, so we'll take. There you go. We'll take notice okay. that uh, the you have a provisional license that has not yet been documented. Okay. So I'm going to work tomorrow. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Who was the second on the motion? <coughs> Thank you. Moving on to operator's license. That was the operator's license. Okay. So we, now I would go on this. We have to open temporary specialty <laughs> retailer's license number 17 mm -hmm. for the Hortonville Hortonia Fire District in the Alpha House Gym on January 6, 2018. Ann and Jack Kunke in charge. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Staying Opposed? <laughs> Want to stay? Approved. Pre registered citizens. So we have I suspect not. there aren't any. You didn't register, did you, John? No. Okay. <laughs> Committee reports, library board. We're uh, ready meeting tomorrow to do interview questions and prepare for interviews coming up. Um, and then the next item on the agenda will have something to do with our um, any remaining budget. Um, we had a, we've been working the last two months to make sure that our budget made it through the end of the um, end of the year, and we've made it. But in, because we didn't have a director in place to make purchases to the end of the year, um, we're going to be asking that even if it's 500 bucks, it'll be put into a reserve account to be used next year. So that's the next item of business. Any questions for Julie? Hearing none, we'll move on to move on to new business. Library. Board request to place any library operating funds remaining for 12 at 123117 into a library projects and operation reserve. And we understand that this isn't something that's normally done every year. But without a director and trying to <coughs> tighten our belts up a little bit, making sure that we made it through with the budget. We just would like to, even if it's under a thousand bucks, we would just like to be able to put that into a reserve account. And we would need a motion for that to happen. Do we know what that number is right now? We won't until we get the final utility bills. That's because we pretty much um, everything was spent down, um, almost everything, and, and there's just, you know, it, it could be, like Julie said, it could, it could be 500, it could be 1,000. We know what the payroll is going to be at the end of the year. We know what, um, we know what everything is, except for we just don't know the utility bills. Um, I think on, what we were looking at at one point was 1200 but we spent some supplies and we've had a staff meeting um, and then they you had we kind of saved that that um, there was another account with $595 in it that we saved in case of an emergency like last year when the window got broke so we just couldn't spend the money the way a director normally would at the end of the year I'll make a motion uh, at the library board's request to place any library operating funds remaining at the end of this year, 1231-17, be put into a library projects and operations reserve. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Point election inspectors for the 1-1-2018 through 1231. 2019 term. 
This is something that comes up every two years according to state statutes. These lists that you have in front of you are the chief are the election inspectors that have agreed to move forward into the next term. I do not currently have a chief inspector. We are searching for one. I am working with Outagamie County and surrounding communities working on finding us one for next year. Um, if we absolutely cannot find one, it is legal for me to serve. Not the best idea, but legal. So we are doing everything we can in order to find somebody to serve as the chief inspector. Um, I guess that's about it. Uh, we did not receive any nominations from either one of the two parties, either the Republican or the Democratic Party, for anybody that they requested to have serve as an election inspector. Therefore, we are free to appoint all of our own inspectors at large and without reference to party. So I would be looking for a motion to approve the list of election inspectors. I move to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Approved. R-26-2017. <coughs> Resolution adopting 2018 salaries and wages. This one is pretty self-explanatory with that first prayer paragraph stating that the following salaries or wages are in the budget. As you can see, all of the department heads are per contract, so there is no amount listed there. It would be per the contracts that would be decided. All of the other positions on here were provided for by the department heads in the budget. And this one needs to be passed so that we have a working scale for the employees for the first payroll in January. I'll make motion to approve resolution R2617. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Approved. Business and retail park residential property. That is. Um, Peter had asked them to be on here uh, for the last meeting. From the last meeting, if you recall, there's the two parcels that are still left in the business and retail park that the village owns. One is 0.88 acre, the other is 0.46 acre that Sharon Johnson's home currently is on. That lease ends uh, April of 2018, and we have informed her that um, the village does not intend to renew that lease. We have had in the past several inquiries about that property and potentially a joint um, merging the two blocks, um, but really we're, we're going to continue to have difficulty in marketing and selling that because it's it's not buildable at this moment. We, we really need, frankly, the house gone um, and the, the site prepped to have, have it be um, really marketable for development. So uh, Bob and I had talked about that a while ago. I know Al has already talked to Sharon Johnson, so she is aware that we do not intend to renew that, that lease. And, and I would Actually, when we get to that point, I would recommend that the village explore the possibility of using TIB funds to raise the home and prep the site for development. Uh, that was my question, my concern. I didn't. I knew she was under a lease, but I didn't, didn't know when it terminated. And when it did, what we were going to do with it. I mean, if it was an opportunity for us to continue to lease it out until such time we could, you know, improve it some way, shape, or form. But your point is, it's not conducive right now to any improvement just based on what's there. And I, how big any, how big one is it? That one is 0.46 and the one immediately north of it is 0.88. So if the two were combined, I did have a part, uh, a, an interested group looking at it for a while and they ended up walking away because if they couldn't wait that long and, and so forth. But the two combined could be 1.2 acre. Okay, so there's acres. 0.4 something in the front? Yep, and, and 0.88 behind it. Hmm. And the other um, concern is that um, the Carl has said that he knows that the roof and the um, furnace HVAC is nearing the end of its life. So if we were to continue with the lease, then as landlords, basically, we would be responsible for upgrading that. We're frankly hoping that nothing goes wrong between now and April. What do you think it would cost us to raise that? I haven't even looked into that yet at this point, but that is part of something that we included in the TIB plan. Yeah. So that is something that, um, because the care partners and the um, East Village um, developments have occurred in that TIB, we will have funds. We have enough to, to do grant <coughs> on that. My concern with that property is it's 
It's good to know that there's another 0.8 acres behind which would be accessible from the back road. There's a problem I would have with the retail operation there with ingress and egress into that piece of property in that road. It's a quagmire when you come in, when they come into school and you leave school, it's hard to get in and out of there, even for the grocery store. So if it were developable, developed, uh, we might really consider access from the rear. Yeah. Okay, just FYI. So and one of the, and just to give you a little history on it too, one of the reasons why that home was, was left there is because it's a multi-use tin. So we had to have some residential, but now that Care Partners is here, we meet that requirement because that's in the TID. Okay, so come April, we'll make a decision or as to what to do? I think we should okay. explore that. All right. But as of right now, our intent it was to not renew it, just let it expire, at least. Yeah, we just expand a little there. It was when you had the uh, interest in the in the property and we're looking at that and they wanted to walk the property yeah and so uh, we called sharon and just got a permission to for people to be you know walking around and looking and it was during that time that we had the discussion and uh you know she was taken back at that time that uh, that the, i mentioned that the lease would be up in april and i think she was anticipating uh, that would just necessarily be extended. Mm -hmm. So, so she was put on notice at that time that, um, that she should plan on April being termination date. Is this a zero dollar lease? Yes. Mm -hmm. No. Or no, 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 it's a couple hundred, hundred dollars. dollars. What yeah. is it, Lynch? It's uh, two hundred something. Two thirty. So it was part of the original agreement. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was negotiated in the original agreement. It was because it was her lease. land. It was a very low lease. But she's paying all the utilities? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and that's where it's left at this point is she was told that uh, uh, we didn't have any reason to think that the village was going to extend the lease at all and that she should plan court. Okay. Yeah. And she does know that because, as Diane said, I, I talked to Sharon <coughs> and that was after they did because it was a party that was interested in there that might have bought out the lease. So that's what I discussed with her. And she did realize April was was ending in April. So she does realize that it won't be renewed in April. And you said those two lots are part of the TID? Yes. Okay. Thank you for the update. Any more on this subject? Not any other miscellaneous topics for future discussion. Hearing none, we'll move on to report the village officers, administrators. Uh, the property and liability add-on for cybercrime. Uh, last meeting, we had the discussion about the property and liability insurance, and they had talked about the two add-ons. <coughs> Both they and I forgot about the third one, and I went ahead and said yes. But it's, um, and I talked to Al about it, it's $250 for the year and that's for employee crimes and the cyber crime and actually what's interesting is exactly what the insurance is for um, happened uh, in, in the week in between Lynn got an email supposedly from Al um, which it wasn't but it even showed Al's email address it said hey Lynn you know signed Al um, asking no, for regards. regards regards yes okay, yeah but you know obviously we, we knew it wasn't Al but that has <coughs> happened in the past um, and actually it was the village of Alloway that uh, got duped out of $400,000 because somebody posed as one of their actual contractors intercepted email and sent them the bill and they paid it and it was the correct bill and everything and then the contractor contacted them asking for payment mm -hmm. so this is very much on the rise right now so I talked to Al about it and we went ahead and added, added that on. So it was $250 for the year. So I just wanted you guys to be aware of it. The second part is the UWSP Geography and Geology Department study. I sent you um, some information about a letter that would be required by the village if we were a part of this. 
I went ahead and submitted us saying that we were interested in it, and I'll just quick read the, the scenario or the, the description that they give of it. I thought it was a good opportunity for us. It's the Department of Geography and Geology at UW Stevens Point is currently developing a research project to show the impact of land development patterns on property tax revenues in Wisconsin cities. This is part of ongoing research that they've been doing with the city of Stevens Point, but they now like to expand other cities throughout Wisconsin. So I just put in a quick reply to it, said that the village of Portonville is interested. Um, I think it would be a, a interesting study. I think it would be worthwhile for us to do it. It doesn't cost anything other than a couple hours a month. So um, we'll find out if we are selected. They'll notify us in early January. But I just wanted you to know because um, if we are notified for it, then it's going to be after the next board, right after the next board meeting, and we'll have to do the meeting or the, the letter right away. So I just want you to be aware of it so that you're not. So you're no. You any questions? For no, you? I just want to make it clear that I use the word regards a lot. However, I was not responsible for sending Lynn <laughs> an email under Al's name. We were able to uncover the email address that was behind That's us. The, okay. And it was right to you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's one of those things that uh, everybody in our office goes, okay, this has to be referred to somebody else. Let's look at this one closer because nothing happens right away. The email was actually asking me if I was free for a conversation, but the heading on it was uh, payment, please. There's, oh, really? there's been some too that at the, the City Community Managers Association we've discussed this. There is one where um, the, the the email person was um, impersonating the you know like the head of the community and saying that you got to do this, but I'm in a conference. You know, they said, well, I'll call you back. The person who received the email, they said, well, no, I'm in a conference right now. You can't. I'm busy. I can't take it. But you need to process this right away. And it was just that one didn't fall for it either. But Man, if they just spend their time in towns doing something legal. So, I think it was Peter. That's all. Any other questions or comments? Diane? Police Department. Yeah, the only thing I have is uh, Officer Ross um, accepted a position with the Allegheny County Sheriff's Department. Um, so he submitted resignation paperwork to me. Uh, his last date's on January 6th, so we wish him the best of luck. Um, I did speak with Martin Baker last week. We'll get in a new process going. So outside of that, I, I have nothing. Who's uh, going to take over the schools? I'm going to be going back out there after um, Christmas break. Just uh, it'd be the easiest transition, looking at things given mid-year uh, and some changes up there. So I've talked with Todd Tim, the superintendent, about that already, and I just think that's the best option right now. We continue to be the training grounds for these officers, mm -hmm. don't we? Yeah. Justin's a good guy. Yes, he is. He's a good officer. He'll do well. <coughs> Any other questions or comments for Brian? Hearing none, attorney? Just one thing. Um, I'm pretty certain that the uh, there never was uh, um, a completion of the sheriff's sale in the Shelley property. So there, there was the sale. And then the uh, the highest bidder came to us and asked for relief on the water and sewer, and of course we did not give it to him. Uh, so my information is that that person then did walk away from the uh, purchase. Um, they were forfeited their uh, thirty-five hundred dollars, which was the uh, ten percent down at the time of sale. So hopefully there'll be another rescheduling by the bank. Fairly early date, because there there is there is community interest. There's other people that are interested in buying it at the, the right price. Uh, the water and sewer bill is now in the tax law, uh, so so whoever is the owner of the property has to take care of it. That's all. I and that reminds me, since you brought it up about the property, I had said last at the last meeting that there was um, going to be discussion about some property. Um, a, there's some foreclosed property that had been offered to the village um, as a donation, but in the interim it was sold. So it's not out of books. So that's why I didn't have it on the board on the agenda tonight. Any questions or comments for Bob? 
Building. I, should, I shouldn't have had that one up. What? Yeah, I should not have had that one up. That's it. Presentation of accounts and other claims against the village. <clears throat> the voucher list consists of deposit of payroll deductions, automatic payment of loans, and vouchers number 24288 through 24340 in the amount of $39,820.80, direct deposit payroll in the amount of $27,757.10, and water and sewer utility vouchers number 10225 through 10231 in the amount of $8,187.51. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second it. Roll call. Aye. 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 Approved. Communications and miscellaneous business. Hearing none, comments or suggestions from citizens present? I don't see any. Well, that's a good word. You said that last time. Motion to go into closed session. <clears throat> and we would need. Just more one, one more motion, but noting two statutes. Right. I'll make a motion to go into state statute 19.851E. 19.851C. I'll second. <coughs> Thank you again. Roll call. 